Gian Giacomo Fultrinelli, Wikipedia Audio Gian Giacomo Fultrinelli, 19 June 1926 March 14, 1972 was an influential Italian publisher and businessman active following the Second World War. He founded a vast library of documents mainly in the history of international labor and socialist movements. He became a militant and clandestine left-wing activist preceding the years of lead. Fultrinelli is perhaps most famous for his decision to translate and publish Boris Pasternak's novel Dr. Zhivago in the West after the manuscript was smuggled out of the Soviet Union. He died violently under mysterious circumstances. Gian Giacomo Fultrinelli was born in 1926 into one of Italy's wealthiest families, perhaps originating in Feltri. His father Carlo controlled numerous companies including Credito Italiano, Edison, and Legnami Fultrinelli, which managed vast lumber holdings in Central Europe, some having provided sleepers for the enormous extension of Italian railway tracks in the 19th century. Carlo died in 1935. At the instigation of Gian Giacomo's monarchist mother, Benito Mussolini had him created Marquis of Gargnano at the age of 12. His mother Gianna Lisa Gianzana Fultrinelli married in 1940 Luigi Bardini, editor of the Italian newspaper Corriere della Sera. During the Second World War the family left the Villa Fultrinelli in Gargnano north of Salò to be occupied by Mussolini and moved to Monte Argentario. Early Life The young Gian Giacomo first took an interest in the living conditions of workers and the poor during discussions with the staff who ran his family's estate. He came to believe that under capitalism most people could never attain his privileges and were compelled to sell their labor for a pittance to industrialists and landowners. During the latter stages of the Second World War, Gian Giacomo joined the Legnano Combat Group and at the same time enrolled in the Italian Communist Party, fighting the invading German army and the remnants of Mussolini's regime. In the post-war period the PCI held an influential position in the Italian electorate. The country was in economic ruins and the party's opposition to Mussolini had gained it great popularity. The PCI was in coalition until 1947. Carlo Fultrinelli's will had made Gian Giacomo heir to three quarters of his assets and they came fully under his control when he came of age in 1947. Banca Union was controlled by Gian Giacomo until 1968, when it was taken over by Michel Sindona. According to some interpretations Sindona was pushed to buy out Fultrinelli by IOR, the Vatican Bank, a minority shareholder embarrassed by cohabitation with a communist partner. From 1949 Fultrinelli collected documents for the Gian Giacomo Fultrinelli Library in Milan, documenting the history of ideas, in particular those related to the development of the international labor and socialist movements. The library later became an institute, later still the Gian Giacomo Fultrinelli Foundation, possessing some 200,000 rare and modern books extensive collections of newspapers and periodicals, both historical and current, and over a million primary source materials. Near the end of 1954, Gian Giacomo Fultrinelli established a publishing company in Milan, Gian Giacomo Fultrinelli Editor. Its first published book was the autobiography of the first Indian Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru. In late 1956 an Italian journalist showed Fultrinelli the manuscript of Dr. Zhivago by the Russian writer Boris Pasternak. Set in Russia, the novel follows a multitude of characters from 1903 to 1943, the period of revolution, bloody civil war, Leninism, and Stalinism. 
Fultrinelli's Slavist advisor told him, not to publish a novel like this would constitute a crime against culture. His son's biography of Fultrinelli records the fascinating correspondence between him and Pasternak, as they successfully resisted clumsy attempts by the Soviet regime to halt publication of the novel. Dr. Zhivago immediately became an international bestseller. Fultrinelli sold the film rights to MGM for $450,000 and, adjusting for inflation, it became one of the highest-grossing films of all time. As a result of his defiance of Moscow, Fultrinelli was criticized and he decided not to renew his party membership in 1957 though he kept on good terms with the PCI. But the PCI leaders were reluctant to be seen to condone criticism of the Soviet Union. Fultrinelli editor scored another coup in 1958 when it published a book rejected by every other significant Italian publisher, The Leopard by Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedusa. Described by some as the greatest novel of the century, The Leopard centers on the Sicilian nobility during the Risorgimento, when the Italian middle class rose violently and formed a united Italy under Giuseppe Garibaldi and the House of Savoy. Despite these successes Fultrinelli editor in this period lost about 400 million lire a year on a turnover of 1.207 billion lire. Still, Fultrinelli Libra had a nominal capital of 120 million in 1956. Fultrinelli Massonite, which he chaired, had a turnover of 1.421 billion in 1965. Another firm which he advised on real estate construction had a capital of 400 million in 1970. So ample funds were available from his other investments. Whatever his own reading tastes, Fultrinelli was always keen to promote the avant garde including the works of the influential literary circle, Group 63. He also took the risk of publishing and distributing novels banned under obscenity laws, such as Henry Miller's Tropic of Cancer. Publisher Starting in Pisa in 1957, Fultrinelli built up a chain of retail outlets which after his death became the largest in Italy over a hundred bookshops. In 1960 Fultrinelli married the German photographer, Ingus Kenthal, and they had a son and heir, Carlo. Inga eventually became the de facto head of the publishing house as Gian Giacomo came to devote himself to clandestine political activity, of which she disapproved. Mother and son still run Fultrinelli Editor together. In the post-war period Fultrinelli had joined the Italian Socialist Party before moving to the Italian Communist Party, which he left in 1957. Fultrinelli spent the 60s traveling the world and making links with various radical third world leaders and guerrilla movements. In the Cuban house of the photographer Alberto Corda Fultrinelli saw and was given the iconic photo of Che Guevara now seen everywhere. Within six months of Che's assassination, Fultrinelli sold over two million posters bearing the image. In 1964, Fultrinelli met the leader of the Cuban Revolution, Fidel Castro. In 1967 Fultrinelli went to Bolivia and met with Regis de Bray. Fultrinelli published the writings of figures such as Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, and Ho Chi Minh, and a series of pamphlets on the unfolding insurgencies and wars in Southeast Asia and the Middle East. He was a close friend of the student leader Rudy Dutchke whom he invited to convalesce in Italy when seriously wounded in an assassination attempt. Fultrinelli gave financial support to the Palestine Liberation Front among other causes. In 1968 Fultrinelli went to Sardinia to make contact with left-wing and separatist groups on the island, 
intending to make Sardinia the Cuba of the Mediterranean and liberate it from colonialism. His attempt to strengthen Graziano Messina's rebel forces was eventually nullified by the Italian secret military intelligence. Fulcinelli increasingly advocated guerrilla activity in Italy on behalf of the working class. In 1970, fearing a right-wing coup, Fulcinelli founded the militant Gruppi di Azione Partigiana. GAP would become the second militant organization after the Red Brigades to be formed during the years of lead. Anticipating assassination attempts by the CIA or Mossad, Fulcinelli assumed a nom de guerre and went underground. On March 15, 1972, Fulcinelli was found dead at the foot of a pylon of a high-voltage power line at Segrate, near Milan, apparently killed by his own explosives while on an operation with other GAP members. Some 8,000 people attended Fulcinelli's funeral. His death, like his father's 37 years before, was immediately viewed suspiciously, but Luigi Bardini had considered and rejected the possibility of it having been a killing at the time of Fulcinelli's death. In 1974 an audio recording found in a shelter of the Red Brigades described Fulcinelli as Activism Death In 1979, during an anti-terrorist trial, the Red Brigade's defendants read into the court record a signed statement that Fulcinelli In cultural memory Forty years after Fulcinelli died, however, previously suppressed forensic reports surfaced in Corriere della Sera, arguing Fulcinelli had been mugged and later tied to the pylon before the bomb was detonated. The implication was that he had been killed and framed by Italian or Israeli security police. Others have speculated Fulcinelli was murdered by the KGB.